Time now for some strategy talk. We're joined now by Jim Rogers. He's CEO of Rogers Holdings. He's live today in Singapore. Jim, great to see you. Welcome. Likewise, Maria. It's good to see you again. Let's talk first about your reaction to yesterday's huge move in the markets. We had the Federal Reserve adding that $230 billion in liquidity, 400-point move on the Dow. What do you think? Maria, you see what it did to the stock market. You see what it did to your friends on Wall Street. But it's not good for America. It's not good for 300 million Americans. It's not good for the world. This man, Bernanke, it just goes from bad to worse. Why isn't it good, Jim? What's not good about 400 it's points on the Dow? It's it's put pouring huge amounts of money into the system. It's printing money. It's going to cause more and more inflation. The dollar is going to continue to go down. It's going to cause the worst recession in the end. Maria, you know what he's doing? The central bank is now going into the to the landlord business. They're going to have all these mortgages that the central bank now owns. What's Bernanke going to do? Get in his helicopter and fly around the world and collect rents from bad loans? I mean, this is this is getting absurd. Jim, let's just uh, confirm what you're saying here. You say that we're going to get a recession regardless. You've told me previously uh, a, a recession isn't necessarily a bad thing to clear out uh, a lot of the ills of the economy, but you're saying what Bernanke is doing is going to make it worse. Well, see what he did. He said, okay, you can bring me your loans. You can bring me your bad loans. I'll take them. I'll give you uh, government bonds instead. So now he's going to have to collect monthly rent payments from people. What's he going to do next? Collect car loans from all the people who are going to default on their car loans? I mean, this is... How much money does the Federal Reserve have? I know they can run the printing presses forever, but that is not good for the world. Inflation is not good for the world. A collapsing currency is not good for the world. It means worse recession in the end. Remember that this is what the Federal Reserve did in the 1970s. They just printed money. They had hu We had huge recession. We had huge inflation. And then we had to bring in Paul Volcker and say, okay, solve the problem. He had to take interest rates to over 20% to solve the problem. That's what's going to happen again. Jim, good morning. It's Richard Wilson. Um, just a question. You've, you've, you've been uh, extremely right for some years now on the commodity trade. Um, do you think, uh, I mean, this clearly perpetuates this liquidity infusion into the market, continual liquidity infusion into the market, perpetuates that trade. Do you, uh, are you still on board or are you uh, getting a little nervous here? No, no, of course I'm still on board. No matter what happens to the dollar and the liquidity, that we have a bull market in commodities because of supply and demand. This is just icing on the cake. These guys running the printing presses so fast just means it's going to go on that much longer and be that. It's certainly good for me. It's not good for the world, but it's certainly good for me, and I don't approve at all. You know, the Japanese tried to do the same thing, Richard and Maria and everybody. Back in the early 90s, they said, we're not going to let anybody fail. We're going to prop everything up. Eighteen years later, Japan is still trying to solve its problems because they made exactly the same mistakes that the Federal Reserve is making now. Jim, I'd like to get your thoughts on this because I take issue with one statement you're making because the Fed's move isn't, or isn't really adding any cash into the market. It's adding treasuries, which has a very different effect. But I will ask you this. What would be the first two things you would do if you were in Mr. Bernanke's seat tomorrow morning? I would, I would abolish the Federal Reserve and I would resign. Step one is abolish the Fed and step two is resign. How would this help the 300 million Americans that you say aren't being helped out by the Fed's activities yesterday? Then we don't have anybody printing money. We don't have inflation in the land. We don't have a collapsing U.S. dollar. We have a, start to have a sound currency again and we start to get rid of inflation. Inflation is not good for the world. No country in the world has ever succeeded by debasing its currency. That's what this man is trying to do. He's trying to debase the currency as a way to revive America. It has never worked in the long term or the medium term. But Jim, absent of, of you know, getting rid of the Federal Reserve, let's talk about real solutions here. What would you be doing uh, instead of you know, printing money? How do you get out of this credit crunch? How do you, you know, put liquidity into the system then if if uh, that's what they feel is the only solution here. Maria, what is so wrong with a recession? It can cost you more to try to prevent a recession than it does to have a recession. We've been having recessions for hundreds of years. Recessions are good. They clean out the excesses. You start again from a sound foundation, and then you go again. It's like a forest fire, Maria. Nature invented forest fires to clean out the underbrush so that a forest can then revive and grow on a sounder foundation. Spending all this money trying to prevent a recession is making it worse, and we're going to have a worse recession in the end.
Jim, regardless of recession or not, there are opportunities to make money in these markets. How can we make some money? Or how can our viewers make some money out of these markets? Well, it's the same thing I told you last time I saw you. Buy agriculture. I mean, agriculture is one of the few places where you're going to make a fortune in the next two or three or five years. Uh, agriculture's got to go much, much, much higher. You can buy the renminbi, the Chinese currency. You can buy the Japanese. These are things I'm doing. I'm buying the Japanese yen. I'm buying the Swiss franc. There are plenty of ways that you can short investment banks. If they rally some more, I'm going to short some more investment banks. There are plenty of opportunities to make money. Jim, it's Richard again. Um, just it's just on agriculture. You said buy agriculture. Now, is this is this uh, farm equipment machinery producing companies or fertilizer companies? Are we talking genetic seed companies like Monsanto? Where, where are your favorite no, plays? No. no, no, I'm talking about agriculture, cotton, wheat, so, uh, uh, Crop. coffee, Crop. sugar, agriculture, agricultural products. The best way to make money in commodities is to buy the commodities themselves. All the studies have shown you would have made 300 percent more investing in commodities themselves rather than commodity stocks. I'm buying agriculture. You know what sugar is. You know what coffee is. This is stuff you use every day. What about this uh, call of yours, shorting investment banks? I mean, some will say that will exacerbate the problem and make it even worse, actually, when people are trying to draw a line in the sand, some of these banks. Uh, are you going to really restrict the ability of these companies to get out of this mess if you and other investors continue to short those investment banks? Wait a minute. What's, why is it the end of the world if an investment bank goes bankrupt? Where is it the Federal Reserve's mandate to bail out XYZ Investment Bank? I, I've read the Federal Reserve Act. Listen, the investment banks have been going bankrupt since the beginning of time. If people make mistakes, look, if you bail out every investment bank that gets into trouble, that's not capitalism, that's socialism for the rich. That's not the way this system is supposed to work. And why should 300 million Americans suffer so that we can bail out two or three investment banks on Wall Street so that they can all ride around in Maseratis and get in planes and fly to exotic <laughs> places around the world? You don't see any cotton farmers, you don't see any 29-year-old cotton farmers riding around in Maseratis. Maseratis. You see a lot of 29-year-old men and women on Wall Street rising around in Maseratis and getting in private planes and flying around. Why do we need to bail these guys out? Hey, if I remember correctly, you were in that uh, yellow Mercedes running around the world for a couple of years there, weren't you, Jim? Listen, let me ask you about those investment banks. Who do you think is the weakest right now? Really interesting yesterday in trading when all of the banks are soaring. You had Bear Stearns, the one holdout, under pressure. A couple of days ago, Citigroup breaks $20 a share. What do you think right now as far as the landscape? Who's the weakest? Who's the strongest? Well, Maria, I, I don't. I only know what I see on CNBC. I don't have a clue. <laughs> sure. I'm short all of. Yeah, sure. I'm sure all I'm short all of the investment banks. I'm short Citibank. I'm short Fannie Mae. You ask me who the weakest? Fannie Mae is the weakest of all of them, but most of them have serious troubles. Don't forget tier three financing. They've all got this garbage and they're hiding it. What about the policing of the investment banks? We've seen a real dent potentially to uh, the further policing and the regulatory pressure that's been put on them with, uh, let's face it, what is a personal dilemma for the likes of Elliot Spitzer. Do we think, regardless of what happens with Elliot Spitzer and his career, that the pressure is going to be maintained on the investment banks uh, to clean up their books and to have better regulation and not gear up 32 times on some of these assets? More regulation. You want you, you want Alan Greenspan and Ben Bernanke? These are the guys who've got us into this situation. They're supposed to be regulating the banking system for the past 50 years. These are the guys who let it all happen. I don't want more regulation. Let the market regulate it. If, if XYZ needs to go bankrupt, let them go bankrupt. I promise you. That will send a very strict signal, and you'll have a lot of self-regulation when these guys start going bankrupt. But letting the regulators come in and say, okay, we're going to bail you out if you'll do what we say, that's not going to solve the problem. We have the same problem again, and that's not good for America. Jim, you've been a huge proponent of the China story and one of the early adopters of that. I think everybody will agree it was a good call, but you talk about the fight against inflation. China seems to be losing it. Inflation is running hot. It's an 11-year high. Retail sales up 20 percent in the previous period. No one would argue definitively that the Chinese government is managing inflation growth story at this point. Are the same pressures not existing in the economy that you've been so bullish on? 
Of course they are. The Chinese central bank at least is honest, and the Chinese government is honest. They're saying there is inflation in the land. American government says there's no inflation. Where do these guys shop? Everything has been going through the roof, and they say there's no inflation. Listen, the EU is doing, the central bank is doing a better job, the Australian central bank, the Chinese central bank, the Norwegian central banks. All of these guys say, look, there is inflation in the world. We've got to do something about it. China's not sitting there lying about it. Bernanke's throwing gasoline onto a, a raging fire. The Chinese central bank and the others are saying, wait a minute, guys, there's a, there's a serious inflation problem in the world. We've got to do something about it. Jimmy. I'd rather have the EU running the Fed than the, than the guys running the Fed right now. Jim, you mentioned China being a, a, an, honest, uh, an honest government. They, I think I'm right in saying their target for inflation is 4.7% and we just had nearly 9 um, last, last Monday. Honesty? Well, wait a minute. I, I said they're more honest. I, there's no such thing as an honest government. If you I, don't put those words in my mouth, I said they're more honest about inflation, is what I said. They're the central bank, and they're trying to do something about it. No, they acknowledge that there's inflation in, in China. That's that was my point. They know there's an inflation, and they're trying to do something about it. They acknowledge it, just like Australia and, and Europe and Norway and other countries.